Right, can we all hear me now? <laughs> the one time I was so confident that everything was going to work perfectly. Oh dear. Right, I think I think we're now online. Um, let me just double check that the music is still going. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Um, for some reason I have a feeling that now the desktop music has stopped working. Is it just now too quiet, everyone? Oh, was that too loud? Right. How are we doing with the desktop music? Is that all good? Is it just, just loud enough for everyone? <laughs> the problem is, right, I don't know if you guys know how the streaming stuff works. In order for the microphone to pick me up, I have to not be able to hear the music that you guys hear, otherwise you'd get the music repeating to you twice. <laughs> so I have no idea how you guys can hear the music, and only my um, wonderful moderator, my husband Matthew, in the chat can um, pretty much hear everything at the same time because he's got some headphones on and I'm sitting over here and he can hear and there's also a 15 second delay with the live transmission so he can hear me twice over right it's there it's there but it's still quiet let's just bump it up a little bit more right do you know what I'm gonna stop fiddling now I hope that's good enough <laughs> right, well, everyone's already chatting in the chat and telling me that everything is wibbly wobbly. I am so sorry, everyone. Right, should we pretend none of that uh, none of that has happened? <laughs> I'm gonna do the classic little. Right, we're starting again. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this month's Millinery Studio live stream. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London, and this is part two of a three-part autumnal live stream on hat blocking. Last week we blocked, I think, four hats? Yes, we, we well, we blocked on four blocks, and I thought that today we'd start by unblocking, and then we'll block the next three. As usual at the start of the stream, I do like to tell you a little bit about what's been going on in my world over the past month. And um, I want to actually start telling you about what I've been watching the past couple of days on Netflix. There's a new series called The Empress and it has some amazing hats. If this wasn't a live stream and a proper video, I'd flash up some pictures, but I really recommend you look up, if you've got a Netflix subscription, The Empress, which is about a German Empress um, Elizabeth, or Cece as she was also known. And it's not exactly like a historical reproduction thing. It's a bit more like Bridgerton, where they've taken some inspiration from modern costuming and the, the the difference though is the background actors they're all in period costume but the foreground the main characters uh, especially the ladies they've all been kind of moderned up a little bit especially empress cece and it is fabulous it's so much better than bridgerton the costuming um obviously completely different story but it's oh it's so wonderful if you've got um, a bit of time and you're looking for your next TV show, The Empress. Exquisite hats, honestly. Um, hello everyone, it's lovely to see um, the all of you norm, um, who always join me in the comments. So we've got uh, Michael and uh, Anissa. Welcome everyone. Hello, hello, hello. What else has been new this week? Just before we do blocking, I promise I'll keep this short. You may have seen a post on the community tab about this ruler over here. If you don't know what that is, um, it's a special type of pattern drafting ruler because my next video is going to be about clothing pattern drafting. I know this is very much a hat channel. It will always be a hat channel, but I've gotten some people asking about clothes drafting because I also make clothes. So if you want to go and have a look at what this is, you can go to the community tab and have a look. Or you can also go to my website. So maybe Matthew, could you drop a link to this ruler um, on my website? And I've got a large blurb there that you can read through and find out what this is. But here it is, this is there if you want to get a head start on next week's video. Uh, what else have I got? <laughs> 
Um, I've this week I've done something that I've always wanted to do, and I've made. <laughs> I've made a mini mannequin. This is this is um, me. This is me hash two. Uh, her name is Tamara, and Tamara is my half size body double. This is um, almost nothing to do with next week's video, but it's using the pattern that I created in next week's video. So here again, exclusive live stream preview for you guys. So um, one, if you follow along with the tutorial that comes out next week, you could make yourself one of these, but you'll have to figure this out by yourself. I didn't film this. This was a kind of 2 a.m. Um, oh no, I can't sleep kind of project. So I, I didn't really film that, but um, this is going to come in very useful. Um, having a half size mannequin and if you draft your own patterns, having the half size mannequin is really useful because you don't have to waste so much fabric in making mock-ups and you'll know that they're fit because they'll fit the mannequin and you'll see any fitting problems in that. Anyway, that's all the sewing out the way. Shall we get onto some hats, everyone? And yes, I am wearing an apron today <laughs> because we're going to be blocking loads of felts. I've got three felts to block today. I've got a couple of fur felt peach blooms. There's this berry, mauve, wine. I don't know, what would you guys call this? I. I guess I'd call it a wine, but then if you look at it in the dark, it looks a bit more burgundy. Then I've got this bright emerald green over here. That's going to be a beret. And then I've also got wrapped up in my burrito area. You'll know what the burrito area is if you followed last month's stream, but we will be showing you the burrito area today. So um, stick around if you want to see the burrito area that is always down here next to me. Um, that's where the third felt is because I've already steamed that one so that we don't waste time. So, shall we get on to part one, unblocking last week's things? So, uh, well, I've got right here already in front of me this purple turban, which is the one that you all requested that you wanted to see. So, let's, I guess, take the pins out. Do I have a pin bit to put them into? No, that was silly of me. So I'm going to actually use some pliers to start taking out the pins to protect my fingers. And I know already, because these are the thin house House, um, housewife pins, I think they're called, or sewing pins, dressmakers pins, they're quite thin. Some of them will have broken into this wood. So once I take out all of these, and then I take this off the block, before I put the block away back into my cupboard, I will be feeling all the way around the block and just making sure that I've got all of the metal ends of the pins out from it, just to make sure that I don't injure myself in the future when I try and block on it again. Whoopsie, sorry everyone, I knocked the table there. These pins are sticking a bit to my pliers. Anyway, that's my week. How has everyone, well, my month even, how, how has everyone else's month been? What has everyone been up to? Have you all been making lots of hats for the autumn period? I quite like to wear berets in this kind of weather. I actually went out to the countryside yesterday. That was a fun excursion. <laughs> and I wore my um, beret that I've blocked on before in one of the live streams from, I think, last year, actually. It's quite a nice beret. Right, that was uh, unexpected. This is the thing, I don't have the correct one of these for this hat block, so it doesn't always stay on very well. So it, it does have a tendency to fall over. And hopefully you guys remember why there was this bit of rope in, in this hat block. It was to make sure that we kept all the curves in perfect shape. Right, I can already see some broken pins in here. So that's 
You see, it's missing its pinhead and it's very, very small. I was thinking of unblocking all of them, but now I wonder if actually this might be a bit boring to view, because essentially I'm just taking all the pins out. Um, would you guys rather just see me block on the new blocks, or do you all want to see what what all of these look like? Just let me know in the chat. And this is, I like to think of the live streams as a two-way conversation, so if you all let me know what you want to see, we can, um, we can do whatever you guys want really i'm i'm prepared for most things today anisa asks do you have some advice on what kind of hat to wear for autumnal time uh something that you could wear with different stars that could be covered um but still cover uh, but still be covered and kind of elegant yes i do essentially berets Berries are great. Um, maybe my lovely husband could come and bring over the berry that is currently in the corridor with a green bow. So everyone can see that berry that I was literally just talking about. Um, berries are really fun. If you wanted something that's a little more dressed up, you can go into felt pillbox territory. I don't have any of those out right now. Oh, thank you, my lovely assistant. Here is this beret. So something like this. Uh, let's see, will it, it... It won't go on over my scarf, but um, here is... Here is this kind of beret. And uh, if you wanted to have a look at this beret in more detail, it's called, on my website, it's called the Classic Blocked Wool Felt Beret or something along those lines. So maybe husband, if you could bring this one up on my website and um, pop it into the chat and then everyone can have a look. And if you are in the UK, you can purchase one of these. You can pick the color of the velvet bow that it comes with. And the velvet bow is attached by a little pin. So you see, you can change the color of the bows if you like. And that also means you could take the pin off and put something else on it. Maybe you've got a collection of your own pins that you like, or uh, you can also have a look at my feather pom-poms. I quite like to wear this with feather pom-poms as well. So that's, that's the classic wool beret and that's different to a french style beret i would say if you if you think of what if, if i say the words french beret um you might picture exactly what i'm talking about which is one of those it's still wool felt but it's not blocked so it's just one of those flat knitted berets that when you put them on your head you can kind of shape how you want them to sit um those are generally the ones that are sold everywhere because they're mass produced so if you want one of those um, lots of people wear them um, i personally prefer a blocked beret that's partly because the floppy french ones um, they're always sized too big for me because obviously if things are mass produced um, they want to go for the most average size and the most average size is uh, 56 57 centimeters i mean 57 is actually counted as a lady's large but these days um because you know we're always changing as human beings the average i think is actually coming closer to 57 centimeters for head sizes especially as you get older so that is generally the average head size for everyone i think so they just don't fit me. Me and my tiny head at 50, 54 centimeters. <laughs> Although I actually prefer my winter hats. It's my summer hats, I like them to be 54 centimeters, but my winter hats, I prefer them to be 55 centimeters because I tend to um, have fluffier hair in the winter for some reason. Right. Uh, I think I've gotten all the pins out. Now, the number one important thing before you take a hat off a block is to have a sip of your cup of tea, but then get a pin and find the center front and center back. So I'm just going to lift up a little bit. My block should have some marks on the inside. Now you won't see this, I think, but if I just 
try and tilt that. Oh, it's a bit dark in there, but somewhere in there is the center back. So I'm going to feel for the center back. There'll be a notch in the block. Well, the notches on the block are actually usually the center front, but I'm just going to estimate that the center back is somewhere there. And I'm going to pop, pop that pin through. And the center front, let's see if I can figure out where the center front is. And this is going to help me when I come to putting in a ribbon. I probably wouldn't bother wiring this. I would wire a pillbox, but a hat that's, um, um, a hat that's a head fitting hat, you don't necessarily need to wire it. So for example, the berry I just showed you just now, that doesn't have a wire in it at all. Martha asks, is there a video of how you do the halo headband? I can't find it. Ooh, um, halo headband. I don't think I've done a video on a halo headband, have I? I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. Um, all the videos are on my channel, so I guess um, if you leave me a comment after the stream, I might be able to, uh, a more detailed comment about exactly what you mean, or me just message me on Instagram. Um, I might be able to help you locate it. Right, time to take this off. This is always a worrying moment because you never know. Sometimes they get stuck. Oh no, this one's good, this one's good. This one's coming off. You see the block is sliding out. Oh, well now it's stuck, hang on. I don't want to push it too much because I don't want it to get all squished and misshaped. Right, there we go. I'm just going to pop this block away. Now, caring for blocks. This is a really important part. I, I am not going to leave this block covered in cling film. When it goes back into the cupboard, into my blocking cupboard, if you've seen my um, studio tour video, you'll know what the blocking cupboard looks like. This will be taken off. Now, the other thing is, is I'm trying to be more eco-conscious. And I don't want to be throwing away cling film that I've only used once. I think that's a waste. So what I tend to do is actually, let's cut through some of this tape. And the way I'm going to store this block away is it will sit, this will all come off. The block is going to sit like this so that this is protected. And then the cling film, I'm just going to rest it over the top. So the next time I need to block something that's a similar color to this, if I wanted to block something white, I would recover the blocking cling film because you don't want dye transfer. But if I'm going to dye something that's a pastel color or something that's darker than this, I will reuse this cling film. Right, let's get back to this hat and have a look. So, it will obviously need cutting up. Now, the one problem I've got here is I've got a bit of texture from the rope coming through. Now, what I could do is I could find a nylon bristle brush, so that's one of these, and I could try and brush the felt. Because this is a fur felt, oh, this is going to sound funny, so I'm, I'm not going to speak as I brush. There we go, that light brushing. I mean, it's still got some texture. Now, if it's still got some texture, I could grab a metal bristle brush. So this is just a bit of, um, it's a wire metal brush, and this is a nylon bristle brush. So the nylon bristle brush I would prefer to use because it's much gentler, but if you're trying to get rid of some kind of imperfection or something, then the metal bristle brush will do it, but you don't want to overdo it because you can make a hole in your felt. So just be very, very careful with one of these. I'm not going to do it right now because I want to be fully concentrating. Let's see, I guess, well, here it is. <laughs> here is this hat. Maybe we want to see it on my head, but for that I would have to cut the felt. Okay, well, 
let's compromise, let's compromise. I'm not going to cut anything now because as we all know, cutting is scary. Whether you're making clothes or you're cutting into a hat, it's very scary. I'm not gonna do it live in case I mess it up and I don't wanna waste any materials. So here it is off the block. For the next stream, I will carefully in my own time and taking my time about it, I will trim the excess off and then try it on for you guys next stream. So just make sure you're subscribed and you click the notification button so that you get notified when the next live stream will be. So ta-da! Hat number one. That's turned out pretty well. Let me pop it somewhere where it won't be in the way. Hopefully down there. So I, I hope I'm still managing to tell you guys new things that maybe you've forgotten or that you haven't heard before about blocking because really a lot of the blocking process is the same depending on the material and depending on the block but essentially just make sure your felt is stiffened that it's dry that the stiffener is dry before you steam it then make sure you steam it well then when you pull it over the block make sure your block is cared for then when before you take it off the block make sure you mark your front and back then take it off very carefully and if it needs a wire then the wire needs to go in straight away if it doesn't need a wire then just trim it carefully you know all these things right i don't want to spend too long taking off the um, other blocks. So let's just quickly go over what I did last time. Sorry, making lots of noise on the table today. Oh, this one has almost adhered itself to its jar stand. So this is a tip, a trick that you can do if you have a block and you don't have the turner or a stand. This is, I think, called a turner, I think. I think they have different names, I can't remember. And then this is a stand. If you don't have either one of those, just, you know, use a jar. It's a trick that is very, very old. It's, I think they talk about it in some, some of the millinery textbooks that I've previously done reviews of. Right, this is a blocked, twisted paper. So this is what the texture of the twisted paper is. It looks like a twisted sisal, um, twisted seagrass, twisted sisal. They're all, um, Spinner, that's the one. Rachel from the YouTube channel Labricaloose says that this is called a spinner. That That is correct. I That strong my memory, thank you. Right, um, twisted paper, and you can kind of see from this camera view, I'm not gonna reach over there because I've got my burrito section under me, but you can see that light blue one next to the millinery sign, that block there, um, that hat there, that was also blocked on this block, and that's just a plain paper, a flat paper, cape plain, uh, cap, cape plain. But here it is, this is all dry now, and it's very, very stiff. You can hear it crunching. So, there we go. I'm not going to take this one off the block right now, because it will need wiring immediately. Because this isn't quite a head-sized hat. It is a, it, it is actually bigger than my head, but it needs the wire to hold its shape. So I'm not going to take it off now, otherwise it will all spin out of shape. So, but here it is. I'll take it off the block and wire it for the next live stream, and then we can admire it then. Otherwise we won't get to the blocking today. Uh, right, what I do really need to unblock is this one here, which is currently upside down. I didn't quite manage to block this one live the other day because it was just all going all over the place, but this is one of those nice um, rounded brims with a front and back section. And it does have the space in the block for the straw to be tucked over itself, but because this is a test, I'm using off cuts from a different hat project and I didn't quite have enough to cover the bottom of this, but let's start unblocking it. As usual, first I've got to take off um, all the pins. Ah, let's talk about this quickly actually. Can you see this rope again? I've got another blocking cord here. This isn't pulled around anything, I'm just using it like string in the, in the same way I used it on the turban block, the purple one we've just taken off, because this, there's a lip over here at the back 
and I couldn't get the pins to keep it in that groove so I've put some string in to get right into that groove to make sure that it's holding its shape. Oh, and while I'm doing this, I want to tell you guys about a video that I'm planning that I am very excited about. And actually my husband's very excited about this one because it concerns him. Um, we are going to be trying to bring millinery into the 21st century using technology. I don't know if, um, I don't know what the cross-section is of the millinery community of people who are also interested in new technology. I don't know whether that's just me or uh, maybe someone else as well. But essentially, there are ways these days of making, of scanning in uh, 3D models of items. Now, that I think is a very exciting thing for hat blocks and hats in general because if you can get a 3d scan of a hat block then you can share that 3d scan with the entire world on the internet and everyone can download the 3d scan take it to maybe a, a 3d printing place or um uh something like that and uh, make a copy of it so we no longer lose blocks and for people who live in areas where they don't have access to block makers that is going to be um completely game chain uh, game changing for the millinery communities um so i want to do a video of me trying to do that with all my blocks oh whoopsie i've just broken a pin oh well that happens i've got to make sure that i get it out of here later. So in fact, I'm just going to pop another pin in over here. Just going to go like this so that I remember to come back and just check the block for a pin in this place. Um, Rachel says, that's me and my graduate students. We've been researching and publishing on 3D scanning fabrication hat blocks. There are several block files you can get for free on thingverse.com. Yes, there are and hopefully when I do my experiments, um, there will be more. Isn't that fun? <laughs> um, the other interesting, exciting development in technology, and I don't know if you've done much research with this, um, with this and your students, Rachel, but you might want to look into this. Um, AI image creation. So has anyone in the chat heard of an AI called, uh, now the Americans pronounce it, Dolly 2, but it's not spelt Dolly 2, how I would think of Dolly being spelt. Husband, maybe you can just write into the chat how Dolly 2 is actually spelt. Um, because it took me ages to figure out that it wasn't Dolly, like Dolly Parton. It was Dal E 2, which is how I would pronounce it. But considering I've only heard Americans pronounce it, everyone says Dolly 2. <laughs> um, that is a fascinating AI program. Um, now, my husband can correct me on this, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not that versed in all the correct, um, stuff. Um, it's, you can use it for, like, product iteration. So if you're designing things, then it's, oh no, I'm never going to be able to get that pin out. Mm, let's try a different set of pliers. Nope, that pin is um, gone forever. I'm just going to get a hammer and hammer it in. I'm just going to pause the microphone. There we go. That's going to be safe now. There's no pin poking out. I couldn't get it out with the pliers. Right. Where were we? Oh, AI things. Yes, um, product iteration. So you could you could feed it an image of a product that you've designed, and then you can say to it, "I want to see this product, but in this color," or "I want to add a texture into this part of the product," or something like that. And the AI will just generate these images for you, so you are no longer wasting your time creating all the visuals 
that you might need to complete a design, which I think is revolutionary. Once again, I've got my pin. I'm just going to mark on the back. Oh wait, no, hang on. I need to mark on the back at the head fitting. What am I doing? Well, I might as well mark it on here, but I will need to mark it on at the head fitting as well. Okay, time to turn this over. Let's work on this side of the block. So I hope that makes sense about the AI thing, but essentially it's um, it was a closed beta. Um, so they were still testing it and I, I applied for the closed beta, but obviously I'm not important enough, so I, I didn't get into it. But it, I think it's now available to everyone to test and use. So maybe closer to the new year, I will have had time to play with it and we can all have a little bit of fun and see what hats it can design. Because I've, I've seen videos of people going through iterations of like designing trainers on it and that was pretty cool. It's, it's essentially going to cut down the time it could take to develop a collection. Now, I don't think it should be used for developing a collection from scratch because then you're taking away the fun of it, but you can take away the, the work involved if you work with sketches for designing. And that's, that's what I'm really excited to play with. So I hope I've explained that well enough. If I've made any mistakes, which I probably have, in explaining exactly what Dolly 2 does, um, I will rectify that in the video once I actually film it about this. Um, or, you know, you can just correct me in the chat or in the comments if you are watching this after it's gone live. Right, I've almost gone all the way around the head fitting. So this is called a head fitting. Um, usually this would be a collar block, which is just a flat piece of wood, the circumference of which will be the size of someone's head. But I don't want to waste space by having many, many, many different collar blocks. So I just use one of these, I think it's called a hat jack. Um, and I size it to whatever size I need. And I can't remember what this one was. I think it was about 50, 55 centimeters I've done again. Right, it's time to all mark on the front and back. So at the head fitting, this is really important because if you don't mark on the front and back, you might not be able to get a balanced hat on the head. So when I talk about balance of the hat, I mean, when you attach it to a crown, if your crown is ever so slightly off, like ever so slightly twisted, even by five millimeters, which is half a centimeter, you will, you will notice it you might not notice what is wrong, but you will notice that something is wrong. And honestly, it's just the worst when you've spent so much time making a hat and then you kind of go, oh, but why is this not quite right? And you can't tell why it is. And it's usually because the front and back is off. So I'm trying to avoid that by putting in some pins that will directly point me towards the section of the front and back. Now, I think this is going to be a piece of cling film that I'm not going to be able to reuse. Oh no, maybe I will. If I flip this block over and take it off like this. So, oh, actually, before I do that, the other thing I'm slightly worried about is getting a good line across the edge. Now, I've only got this much here. Oh, you can't see. I've because this isn't, if, if this went all the way in, I would, I would leave it. But I think what I'm going to do is grab a pencil and before taking it off the block, just mark on this distance all the way around so that I can have a clean cutting line. So that when I come to putting in a wire into the edge, because I will want to wire the edge of a brim like this, um, I have a good clean cutting line, but I need for that. Give me one second, everyone. Shall we take a one minute break while I go and find my um, ruler, a slidey ruler, it has a name, I can't remember what it's called, um, to measure out the distance. So we'll take a one minute break, everyone, and I'll be right back. Thank you. 
Maybe that was closer to 30 seconds, but let's carry on. I don't want to waste a lot of time here. Thank you for sticking with me, everyone. <laughs> so it's, um, this is the tool I was talking about. Let's switch camera views. This one. This has a name, but I, I cannot remember what it's called. But it's useful because it has a guide up here with a slider. And so you can set it at, at a distance and then mark it all the way around, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to set it at the distance like that. You can see the red stopper is at the distance of this and I'm going to grab a pencil. Seam gauge. Thank you, Julia. It's called a seam gauge, everybody. You see, this is this is why I like doing the live streams because I don't always have all the answers and everyone else in the chat will be able to join in and we can all learn from each other because let's not pretend that there is one person in the world who is all knowing and knows absolutely everything, right? We can all learn from each other. So yes, thank you, Julia. It's called a seam gauge. If you don't have one of these, this is one of those tools that isn't necessary, but it's nice to have. And um, you can find really nice ones on sale. So you can find cheap ones. Um, I don't recommend you buy a cheap one. I had a cheap one of these. It fell apart and the numbers on it all came off. So if you find a nice, good quality one, then I suggest it's, it's, it's worth spending the money on it. If you, if you want to. So I'm just taking it round and marking it on. Let me just show you what the pencil line looks like. Can you see on there? Oh, you can very gently see a pencil line. Let's keep going round. And then eventually we hit the section at the back where I'm just going to follow the groove that's there until we join. About there. Almost made all my way around. And obviously, <laughs> this is a straw hat and it's now autumn. But actually, many professional fashion designers and fashion houses, they're on a kind of year and a half ahead schedule, I think. I still haven't managed to get my head around these, the um, schedules of fashion seasons or whatever. It's just, it's way too complicated to understand. Right, I've got my, oh, that's a bit off. It's more here. There we go, just double checking my center front and center back. There it is. Right, um, I guess I'll start peeling it off. Now, if you had a butter knife or something like that, that tends to be quite useful for something like this. Hmm, let me see. Let me have, um, okay, I think I'm going to have to cut into this cling film. There we go. It's going to be much easier to take it off if I can take off this. Oh, that's really stuck on as well. So I tend to stick on these head things, the collar heads, head collars, head size collars. There we go, completely forgetting my words today. I tend to stick on these head collars using masking tape. There we go, that's come off. I'm just going to make sure all the masking tape comes off of this one. So you see, it's, it's I think it's called a hat jack. Now, lots of professionals will tell you, oh, you shouldn't use one of these, just get a head collar. But you know, if you're trying to save money, which I can understand, especially in the current economic world, if you are trying to save money, this is the way to do it. Just find substitutes and don't listen to someone who tells you there's only one correct way to do something because there really isn't. There are lots and lots of different ways to do things. There are definitely some ways that are better than others, that's technique wise, but what kind of equipment you use, there's no correct or incorrect equipment. That's what I would say. Ta-da, that came off very well.
here it is. Look at that. Hasn't that turned out really well? And th again, this is going to be one of those things that if I trim it now, it will all unravel uh, because it's a woven straw. So I, um, it's a woven parasizal. What I definitely don't want to be doing is cutting into this and it unraveling. So what I will probably do off camera, um, either this evening or tomorrow, I will find my pencil line and do a stitching line that's uh, on the sewing machine set to a uh, the largest stitch that the sewing machine can do and I will stitch either side of this line two rows of stitches then I will get my scissors and cut in between the two rows of stitches that way it won't fray and once I've done that, I will wire it straight away so that it doesn't lose its shape. And I'll show you how that turns out in the next stream. Let's move on to the next hat. Mm, which one should we do next? Uh, what have I got left? Oh, it's just this one. Um, maybe this is another one of those that I won't unblock right now. Otherwise, we won't have time to block anything else. But if you remember last stream, this is a bias piece of cinema and I didn't quite have time to block it fully on the stream, but I finished it straight away afterwards. So let me show you exactly what's going on here. Um, oh, Rachel has an answer for us about um, collections and things. Rachel says, when I worked as an assistant at a contemporary milliner in NYC, she designed collections on a six month lead, straw hats in fall for the following spring and felt for fall for the spring. Yes, I, I guess that makes sense. So it's not quite a year and a half ahead. It's, it's about six months ahead. I think that makes more sense for hats, but I think when, when it gets to like the professional, like Dior's and Chanel's of this world, I think they're about a year and a half ahead. I think. Um, still getting my head around all that. And I have just pinned myself with the pin. Never mind. So, the way I've blocked this, this was a bias strip of cinema. And if you want to learn how to make a bias strip of cinema, I have a video on how to do that somewhere. I can't remember what it's called. Maybe if my husband can find it, he can pop it into the chat. It's it's the one with the multicolored macaron hats. Husband, you know the one. So. What I did is I've pulled it round the bottom and the top and I've got an overlap at the back here. You can see it overlaps. Most of this will be cut off. When I cut the overlap, I'm not going to cut it straight down. I'm going to follow the weave of the straw. So it's on a nice diagonal weave and the top and bottom, I will probably cut. Can you see how it curves over the block here? I'll probably cut it around that far. I'll use my seam gauge again, just to make sure. And once I cut that, I'll pop a, a wire in into the bottom of the brim. And I will probably want to attach it to a crown straight away. So I think I'm probably going to work on this. This, this might spend a little bit more time on the block until I'm ready to, um, to finish this fully, I think but I just thought you'd all like to see that the way I've blocked it, because I didn't want to damage this block. This is a very, very old block and it had a split down one side of it. So I didn't want to pin into this just in case it split again. So instead of pinning into the block, I've, I've wrapped a very, very long blocking cord all the way around it. I think this is about three meters worth of blocking cord that I've just wrapped around and around and around. And I would not have been able to do this with felt because felt takes a long time to dry, but because cinema, if you use steam and not water, um, if you steam the cinema into shape, it will dry almost instantly. So it's holding its shape as I go around. So I steam a bit, wrap the, wrap the cord, let it dry, move on to the next section, steam a bit, wrap the cord, let it dry. And this is how I've made my way around this block. So that's, that's that one, in case you were all interested. Once I turn it, once I take it off the block and reinforce it a bit, we'll, we can talk more about the construction process. Shall we block something? <laughs> I bet you've all been looking forward to that. As we are in autumn, I've got some berets to be blocked today, starting with... 
this giant berry over here. This is absolutely massive. I'm going to need to put a collar block into it. So as I've already mentioned, that's this one here. Maybe I shouldn't have resized it. And I promised to show you all the burrito corner. So if I could have my wonderful assistant come and move the camera for me. <laughs> and we can all discuss what I mean by the burrito corner. <laughs> Right, <laughs> so that's the front-facing camera there. Oh, I'll, uh, so that we don't give everyone a headache while you move the camera. And hopefully that doesn't disconnect. Right, I think we're ready for burritos. <laughs> uh, is it this one? No, it's that one. There we go, that camera. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the corner next to me. So I'm sitting here to the left of it. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of behind the scenes, how exciting. So this is what I mean by a burrito. I've got layers and layers of kitchen roll, um, not kitchen roll, what are these called? These are called tea towels. We have a lot of tea towels in the UK. You might have bought them as a souvenir if you've been over here, but these are plain tea towels. And what I do, this is to saturate the, the, the felts even better. I've got a steamer. When the steamer goes on and it's spurting steam, I pop the felt that's to be steamed over the top and then I cover it in loads and loads and loads of these tea towels and what that does is that keeps the steam inside the felt so it gets really 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 nice and hot and then it's much more pliable to stretch over a giant block like the berry so in fact I'm going to pop this steamer on right now has it got enough water yes let's pop that on I'm going to pop this over the top already and then I'm going to just completely, completely cover it. And I've also got my steamer standing on a towel because that protects, well, firstly it protects the floor, but again, it's going to help that heat and steam stay in. So I hope that makes sense. That's what I mean by the burrito corner. <laughs> Thank you, assistant. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> oh, the things we do in the home studio. Um, Rachel says, going back to 3D technologies, we use Enscan brand of 3D scanner to scan blocks and also scan hats and reverse engineer their blocks. Yes, that's also something I want to, to try, but I'm going to be using something called Polycam. Um, Polycam used to only be available for uh, iPhones, but... Um, Uh, it's now available on Android and I am an Android only household, so we shall be using that. Right, I'm going to set my head size to the desired number, which is 55, so I'm going to wrap the tape measure around and then loosen the hat jack whoops, until it's tight on the tape measure. Let's have a look. Is that there? Yep, that's it. That's it. 55. Perfect. Next. Now, the one problem with this berry block is it's actually meant for a bigger head size. So there was clearly, there used to be a collar block on here and there isn't any more. So I might end up with a little bit of a funny lip. But that's okay. As long as I completely center my hat jack, then hopefully it will be even. So I'm just going to, I mean, ideally I'd measure this, but I'm going to try and just do it by eye. Now I am worried that I don't have a felt that's big enough. Now, I, I hope I pronounce your name correctly, and I'm, I'm sorry if I don't, but um, Tiwonji says that they are enjoying this lecture. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I don't know if I'd call this a lecture. <laughs> um, that makes it sound a little too formal and professional. Um, this is just uh, a milliner having some fun in her studio. <laughs> but thank you very much. I'm very flattered. So I'm just sticking some masking tape on. 
sometimes if you buy a purpose-built block set that comes with um, like a, its own collar block and things, uh, the collar blocks will have holes in them and your blocks, crown blocks, will have nails sticking upwards and that's for the collar block to attach to the crown block and it won't um, it won't move around but I'm not that fancy so I just work with what I've got because as I've already said you know you can't be expected to shell out thousands and thousands of pounds or whatever currency wherever you are on new equipment when you start and you you know you never know if you're going to enjoy it or not so I, I hope my, my aim has always been to just try and make millinery a little more accessible to everyone so I'm never gonna prescribe the way you do anything because I don't think that's in the spirit of sharing and making things accessible and if we want millinery to survive um, because it is close to being on the endangered crafts list we've got to make exceptions on how we tell people to do things obviously there's good practice as I've already said um, but there isn't a right or wrong way of doing things and hopefully hopefully my channel is a testament to that I'm just going to get a lot more tape on this than I think I need because otherwise it will move and I'm just going to check on my fur burrito down here oh it's very hot oh that's very very hot yeah I'm just going to rotate that a bit get a bit more of it wet or rather no I mean you don't really want to wet the felt or at least that's not how I would advise you to do it um, so I wouldn't wet the entire felt I wouldn't make it damp I wouldn't make it so damp that it needs longer than 24 hours to dry because you um, you, you can risk pins rusting and you don't want to do that Oh, I think I've run out of water. Yes, I have. Have I? Oh, no. almost. And here's a, a steamer care tip, actually. Um, I am in my steamers. I live in a hard water area, so I only use filtered water. This isn't bottled water. This is water from the tap, but it's been through... It's been through one of these. It's been through a filter. because that way my steamer, one second, I'm just going to fill it up. Yes, because that way my steamer doesn't um, doesn't build up the lime scale. And the lime, you, you get lime scale if you're in a hard water area. If you live in a hard water area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You, you get all the horrible kind of white mineral build up on all your hot taps and things. And the way to avoid that with your steamers and your irons and your kettles, any kind of water heating element, just make sure you use filtered water and that will help prevent why is nothing sticking to this block look at that it's all coming off this is supposed to be good quality masking tape this is supposed to be 3m masking tape and it's it's really not sticking that well you see it's moved oh no oh no it keeps moving at some point i'm just going to have to give up and just hope that it doesn't move so much and I, I do also need to cover this in... Do you know what? I'm going to grab a different type of tape, everybody. So uh, we'll take a 30 second break while I go and grab a different type of tape because I really don't want this collar block to move. So I'll see you all back here in 30 seconds. Thank you. 
Right, I'm back everybody. I found the, the other tape. So this is a normal tape, not a masking tape, which I really wouldn't recommend you use, but here we go. Let's see, is this going to stick better? I really don't know why the masking tape isn't sticking. I also don't want to build up too many layers of tape on this. Oh, even that tape isn't sticking. That's very, very, very annoying. I just need the collar block to stay put. Maybe that will work. Mm. Okay, it's it's just being funny. Oh, do you know what? Another thing I want to try today is using a bag. I should have got this when I got the tape. This is this is something I've been meaning to try, right? These are um, plastic rubbish bags, and apparently some milliners use them instead of cling film, so let's give it a go. Because the problem with cling film is that it moves. Right, there we go, a paper bag. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, a plastic bag. There's gonna be a problem here because my paper my plastic bag has got a bad that's that's a lot of that that'll imprint in the felt never mind we'll just stick to cling film i guess right let's hope this doesn't move too much oh no it moved <laughs> oh dear do you know this isn't the first time during a live stream when I've tried something that I haven't done before <laughs> and it just doesn't quite work and that's always very very annoying so um let's try again it oh the tape's all coming off all that tape is coming that moved <laughs> uh Michael says, could there be a finish on the block that's not allowing the adhesive to work? Yes, probably. I mean, maybe this is why we're told to not oil blocks in the UK. But um, if you've seen my video on um, restoring all these antique hat blocks, I oiled them. Um, and maybe that's why it's not sticking. But you know what? We're, we're all here now, so I'm going to persevere. Maybe I just won't bother with the tape. Maybe I just won't bother with the tape. Um, Julia says, um, I come with an interest in hats for historic slash vintage costuming and I'm also a manufacturing engineer. So seeing the hat construction process is enlightening. Well, yes, I guess, you know, we could call millinery hat engineering because you are trying to make something in 3D. Um, it, it's not necessarily mechanical, obviously. But um, you are trying to create something from something that wasn't there before. Oh, here's the tape measure. So that's fun. Um, and Julia also says, I love your philosophy of using the tools and processes appropriate to the occasion. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I don't think millinery should be about, or to be honest, I don't think any subject should be about Oh, you can only do it if you've got all of the correct tools. It's it's so sad when it's like that because then it instantly becomes inaccessible. <laughs> Matthew says, my husband, <laughs> you need to get um, hat engineer on a t-shirt. Actually, that's that's really fun. Anyone up for merch? I've never I've never thought about that, but that would be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> right. Okay, let's get this block back. So. Um, there's an X on this block over here. Now, I'm going to correct something I said in a previous live stream on blocking. In the previous live stream, I've said, oh, the X is usually the back of the hat. I've now learned that that's not universal. In some cases, it's the front. So I guess just looking at this beret, can you see how there is 
a longer distance here, whoops, a longer distance here than there is here. I'm going to assume that the back is the shorter bit and the front is the longer bit. That's where the X is. So let's assume that that's the front and the other bit is the back and we're going to try and somehow pop it on. And do you know what? If this doesn't quite work, never mind. We've at least tried it. It occurs to me that once I block this, I won't be able to move it. <laughs> um, so, sorry husband, um, we won't be able to have dinner at the table for the... For this at least today. <laughs> because there'll be hats drying on it. I think that's about central. Um, oh, I've missed some messages. Uh, Rachel says, I've had success using those long T-pins to brace the hat jack in place, pinning from the inside at four quadrants. Oh, do you know what, Rachel? I wish that made sense. If you could send me a picture later of those T-pins, um, perhaps, um, hopefully, if, if everyone can um, follow me and Rachel on Instagram, um, we can uh, continue this discussion about how to attach things to blocks without using tape um, through Instagram, maybe after the stream or something. Um, that would be, that would be lovely. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a very hot, 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 hot felt. Now, I'm very glad that that's a very hot felt because I'm, I don't know, oh, I haven't covered it in cling film, have I? Oh dear. All right, let's keep, let's keep that felt hot. Keep that, yes. Yes, I think I've, I think I'm saying all the words, but not necessarily in the right order. Right, cling film. Okay, now some people also say that you can wet the block, um, just mist it very, very lightly with some water to get cling film to stick on. Uh, I don't have a water um, sprayer on me, so I won't be able to do that. We'll just hope that this is enough cling film to just cover it all. Now I've got lipstick all over the cling film. What fun. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, actually, my lovely husband has come and, um, uh, can, can you fill that up with some water for me? <laughs> no, just, um, <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna bring me my spray bottle. Oh, isn't he lovely? Because otherwise I'm really going to struggle with this. I've been told on many occasions that um, my videos look lovely and professional. Well, um, <laughs> here you see the live stream behind the scenes where nothing quite ever goes to plan <laughs> and I can't control all the variables where in videos I would just... In videos I would cut out all the nonsense, but in a live stream, <laughs> that's not an option. So, welcome to the real world, everybody. We can't all be perfect. Did that work? Oh, that slightly works. I really wouldn't recommend doing this every single time. I'd only recommend doing this if you were really, really, really desperate. Because I don't want to damage the block with water. Right. I am also trying to not have too many wrinkles in the cling film. This is why some milliners prefer to use um, uh, plastic bags because you can get those over the block much easier but it depending on the type of fur uh, type of felt sorry that you are blocking um, sometimes the creases in the cling film might show up but fingers crossed fingers crossed this is all gonna be fine uh, hopefully that felt is hot enough before I start blocking I'm going to top up my steamer oh, because it's And here's another tip for your steamers. You never want to. F 
fill up your steamer more than the maximum water line. It's the same as your iron. Because if you do, it will squirt water everywhere. And you, you want to avoid your felt in becoming saturated and wet. The only time it's a good idea for your felt to be saturated with water is if you're using wool felt and you're not using pins uh, for whatever reason that might be. You might be using a blocking cord and not using pins. So um, fur felt doesn't tend to need to be saturated with water ever because if it's saturated with enough hot steam, it just melts like butter around a block, which hopefully we will see in action in a second. Right, I am going to need a blocking cord for this one to get around the collar block. In fact, I'm going to need two blocking cords. There they are. I'm going to need some blocking pins. And I've got these little black pins here. Uh, or I might use the household pins that I've just taken off all the other blocks. Let's see when we get to it. Um, I used to, I, I, I change my preferences pretty much on a daily basis to which pins I prefer to use. Uh, Julia asks, has anyone explored a heat activated shrink wrap? I think they have. Um, but it, I think it's one of those things where I'm just not prepared to spend money on, on that. Um, so if, if you try it, um, let us all know in one of the next live streams in the chat how that worked for you. That would be really interesting um, to see how people, how that works for someone else. But um, I, might, I might look it up, but no guarantees that you will see a, a, a heat activated shrink wrap. I'm just waiting for my felt to get a little bit more steamy. And <laughs> this is a new thing that I've been doing. I've been blocking wearing marigolds, uh, rubber gloves, <laughs> to protect my hands. And I've got quite a deep cut on my thumb at the moment. So actually protecting that with some rubber gloves is a very good idea. Just because I work with dyes and felts, I don't see it um, I, I don't want to use that as an excuse for all oh, my hands don't look great because I always like to have very neat looking hands. That's just my preference. Um, I'm very into nail art, so I like to have perfect nails. So I don't want to ruin my fingers by blocking and getting dyes and dry fingers from it. So gloves it is. Right, I think that's, oh, where is that belt? There it is. Right, let's see, while it's hot, will it stretch? So the one, my one worry about this is that actually there might not be enough to get it round. So I'm going to use my stomach to try and hold one side in place as I stretch the other side because we've got to get it over that lip. Okay, uh, oh well it's kind of going, it's kind of going. It just needs a lot more. Oh, and it's moved. It's moved. More steam. More steam necessary. Um, this is this is one of these blocks that because of its shape, and it's not a puzzle block, I would not recommend blocking wool felt on it. You can try, but I'm not going to <laughs> because wool felt is much stiffer than fur felt. In fact, if I was going to block a, f a wool felt on this, I might try and saturate it fully in water to just get it very, very, very wet. But then I definitely wouldn't be able to use any pins. Um, I just don't really fancy waiting a whole week for a fur to dry, uh, a wool felt to dry. All right, let's go again. So the trick is to work fast. Oh, there we go. It's going, it's going, it's going. Oh, well, one side goes and then the other doesn't. And incidentally, this is exactly why I'm wearing an apron because I'm using my stomach to hold things in place. Okay, we're getting somewhere. 
more 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 steam more steam the other problem that might occur on this block well for a start it might get stuck and we won't be able to get it off but we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it the other problem with this particular block um is that fur felt if it's too pliable it can rip there aren't any sharp corners on this so it might not rip hopefully it won't rip but ow sorry everyone for the noise Do you know what, this might be one of those blocking processes that actually takes, oh, normally it takes me 20 minutes to block a hat. 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on the shape. But I have a feeling that this it might take me a lot longer. All right, more, more steam, more steam. So the problem with using a steamer that's not a Jiffy steamer, if you don't know what a Jiffy steamer up is, um, look, type in Jiffy Steamer into Google and you'll get one of these big steamer machines. The small handheld steamers, like the garment steamers, like the one I'm using, um, because I'm not gonna buy big fancy equipment that I have no space for, um, they don't saturate it with as much steam as a Jiffy Steamer would. So I'm having to take it off the block, get it back, um, get some more steam on it, put it back on the block, and just keep going like that and try and stretch it all out. So in fact, I could try and do it by hand. So I'm missing steam in this middle section here. This is where I'm trying to get the steam into. And after all my talk for not um, wetting felt, I might want to just spray the inside with some water. Uh, see, I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to spray the inside with water. Right, let's go again. I mean, we're 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 making process, uh, making progress with every. It's definitely making some progress. Definitely making some progress. I'll get there eventually. I will get there eventually. How much water has my steam got left? There might come a point <laughs> in about 10 minutes where I might want to give up on this. What did I want to, what else did I want to block today? Oh, I want to block two more today. Hmm, okay, we might not get very far with this one. Because I want to show you a puzzle block beret, and I'd also like to show you a spa tree beret block. And I also don't want to make this stream longer than two hours. All right, let's see. Let's go again. We need to work fast. Pull, pull, pull. Stretch. me okay <laughs> I think I think let's be sensible uh, I'm gonna start steaming the next felt which is gonna be the emerald green one and I think I think I might have to say that this one needs a little bit more time than what I have allocated on the stream and everything's moving everywhere. I think I'm going to have to find a way to get the bottom to stick to this, and then I'm going to have to try and um, redo this felt. I mean, I am I am getting there with the stretching of the felt. You can see it's definitely expanded from what it was, 
Uh, one would say that I probably would have done easier with using a bigger felt. So when you buy felt, it should say the weight of the felt and the weight of the felt will give you an idea of how big it is. So can you see how these two are very differently sized and this big one would have been better on this block. But I really want this shape <laughs> in this colour. So I'm not necessarily giving up, but we'll have to see. You'll have to come back at the next stream to see if I manage which which one I decide to go with. But let's let's switch to a different block in the meantime. Because if it's if it's not gonna happen, I don't want to waste everyone's time. So I'm going to have to spend some time alone with this block to figure it out. Let's reuse this cling film though. And we'll go. We'll go onto this spa tree block. So this is um for those of you who don't know what spa tree is, it's a vintage millinery material that is not produced anymore, so you can't buy it. Um, but this is a vintage homemade spa tree block, and if you'd like to find out more about it, you can go and watch my restoration video about these blocks. Uh, so let's switch over. I'm just going to pop this one away. And here is that Spartry block. Hopefully you can all see it. Uh, my steamer has... Oh, that's rather hot. I'm just going to... Oh, and by the way, all of these are pre-stiffened using my favourite stiffener. Uh, my favourite stiffener for wool felt is called... One second. That's just me filling up the steamer again. My favourite stiffener for wool felt is called Futrex. And it's made, um, it's distributed by a Belgian company. This needs a bit more steam. And um, yeah, so that's what I've used. This is wool felt. The other one was fur felt. You'll see the difference in the stretching ability of this. I'm just going to pop it back onto the steam. Cover it in my tea towels. Oh, I'm getting very tired. <laughs> I've also worn knitwear <laughs> because it's getting cold here in the UK and I was getting quite cold in my flat, but now I'm very warm with all the steam. And I do have a visitor. I have a visitor up here. She's out of shot. Drusilla, would you like to say hello? Come into the shot. Drusilla, come over here. You gonna come? You gonna come over here? No, she's not gonna come over here. I have a cat, in case you're wondering what's going on. Hello, Drusilla. She sits on top of my um, Kallax shelf that's next to me. There she is. <sighs> We're just waiting for the felt to heat up. Hopefully that won't be too long. It's quite a thin wool felt, that one. I'm actually not that impressed with the quality of this wool felt from the supplier that I got it from. So we'll see how it blocks, but the reason I don't like it is it has quite a bubbly texture. So if you're looking for something that is very textural, then um, this kind of wool felt would be perfect. But I prefer my hats to all be very smooth, or at least recently I prefer my hats to all be smooth. I might change my mind in the future, but um, this one's a bit bubbly. I, I wonder if when I stretch it, it will become smoother, or maybe I'll brush it with a brush and it will become smoother, but it's a bit bubbly. And I don't really like that, but we'll see how it goes. Right, let's pop my gloves back on. That steamer is going, is going at full steam ahead. Right, we've got half an hour left. Let's see if I can block this in 15 minutes. I highly doubt it, because I'm very tired. Right, uh, let's just start stretching that on. Now, ideally I'd have something to balance this block on, but because it's not, oh, actually I can stick my hand into the middle of it and pull, 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 pull this felt around. Let's see, oh no, need some more steam, need some more steam. But you can see the bubbly texture there. Right, back onto the, 
back onto the steamer. In an ideal world, you'd let your felt steam for maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes before you even attempt to steam it, but because I'm on a bit of a time schedule, I'm having to take them on and off. Maybe they're not getting as saturated with the steam as I would like them to be. Um, do you know what we haven't discussed today? We haven't talked about where everyone is joining me from. So while that felt is steaming, um, let me know in the chat where you are joining me from. I, 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 I know that I have an audience from around the world, so it's, it's always nice to know who's tuning in. <laughs> How are we doing with the steamer? I think that's getting close. That's getting very, oh, that's very, very close indeed. Right, if I work fast, if I work very, very, very fast, there we go. Hello, right. We're almost getting there. We're almost, almost, almost getting there. Oh, so almost. Every time I steam it, it gets, a little bit closer, a little tiny bit closer. Right, bit more steam. A bit more steam into that end. Just pop a tea towel over the top. Right, um, we've got people joining me from fin uh, Finland and from Belgium in Brussels. Wonderful, lovely. <laughs> oh, um, my steam has run out of, oh no, it hasn't, it just turns off. This is the problem with the burrito method is sometimes when I pile the tea towels on top of my steamer, it flicks the uh, the uh, button on the steamer. So I do have to double check it. Where else? Um, Rob joining us from North Carolina in the US and Julia from Midwest center of the continental US. Welcome everybody. <laughs> nope, that needs more steam. I'm running out of ideas on how to make waiting for the steamer exciting. <laughs> ah, ah, there we go. Right, let's see. That looks right. And off we go. Pulling, pulling, pulling. I guess if I could somehow get it to pull around it, if I had something to rest this on, let's see, if I rest it on the edge of the table, no, it just needs more steam. I'm pretty certain this will work. I'm I'm very, very certain that this will work. It just needs a bit of time. Do you know what I could try? I could try resting it on that jar from <coughs> earlier. Should we try that? Let's try the jar method. Right, so here's my jar. I'm going to make sure the lid is closed. This jar keeps opening. Let's see, is that going to be high enough? No. <laughs> it's exactly the height of the jar. Well, that's not going to work, is it? Oh, maybe. Hopefully that doesn't collapse. No, wait. I don't, I don't want it to be on there. Hmm. Oh, I've got an idea. Should we play my favorite game? Can husband find the correct hat block in the cupboard? Um, husband, I would like you to bring to me a bandeau block from the blocking cupboard, please. It's wooden, it's probably on the middle metal shelf. <laughs> I have a plan. I have a plan. Hopefully, so my plan is, is that hopefully the bandeau block fits inside this, and then I can put that whole thing onto this hat stand. Now, hopefully, husband knows what a bandeau block looks like. It looks like a kind of half hat, I guess. It's like a kind of, like a, like a curved bit of wood. Nope, that's a crown block, darling. <laughs> um, Anissa suggests reverse the spinner inside the jar. Oh, that's clever. Oh, yes, that's the bandeau block. Oh, well, do you know what? We'll try both while I'm waiting for the... Let's see. So this is a bandeau block. Let's see. Does that fit? 
that would work actually. Um, let's also try the jar method. So reverse the spinner inside the jar like this. Almost. That would kind of move around a bit. If I had a wider jar or a um, smaller jar opening, that would work very well. Good thinking, Anissa. I like how you think. Right, but let's try this way around. So I've got this kind of construction. It's not going to work for, because it's sticking out, but maybe I can at least get the top pulled over. Right, let's go, go, go. Oh, that's much better. That's going now. There we go. Look at that, everyone. Oh, it moved. There's still, there's still not quite, not quite enough steam for the top. This is where I'm going to grab my steamer and, oh, it needs another top up. It needs another top up, so, oh, so I was talking earlier about not filling the steamer up above the max line. If I fill it in above the max line, it will spit water everywhere. And I know that because I've done it once or twice. Right, to get that back on, let's get that steaming up. Oh, I love it. You're all getting to know each other in the comments, in the chat. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Julia says, you have hugely increased my appreciation for the ingenuity and work that has gone into the hats in my vintage collection. Oh, well, I'm so happy. That's great. Um, I hope you're making hats as well, Julia. I hope you're not just looking at all your vintage hats on the shelf and wearing them, but I hope you have a go at making them as well. waiting for the steamer once again. So what I'm going to do is once the steamer is steamed up, hopefully that's not playing too much havoc with the microphone. Um, if this is too loud on the table, if you guys just let me know in the chat and I'll just mute the microphone and you'll just have to watch me do this bit. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct the steam right onto this bit that's still all scrunched up um, from the top. And as I do that, hopefully there'll be enough steam for it to... It's not even the top, is it? It's... Hang on, has this moved? Oh yes, it keeps moving on that. It's not quite the top. Okay, right, I'm going to start directing. Oh, my steamer's leaking. This sometimes happens. I have no idea why my steamer starts leaking from the bottom. It's such an odd thing. That's getting a bit more pliable. I can actually smell the fumes of, of the stiffener. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Ooh. Come on, come on hat. Ah, you see now we've lost the steam in this. I clearly haven't steamed this for long enough on the, um, on the steamer itself. But you guys get the idea. Essentially, I'm going to have to carry on steaming this, just really saturate it in steam and then try again. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this aside and we're gonna have a look at the next block. Let's have a look. Right. Um, the next block I've got for you, I hope that's okay, everyone. It's, um, <laughs> as usual, you never know what's gonna happen on a stream and sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. And these are all new to me hat blocks. So let's try this one. Let's see. Now, does this one need to go on a spinner? Or, oh, that's going to be too thin to fit into any of my things. Never mind. So I guess I'm just going to have to block on it on the table. Right. So this is a puzzle block. This is one of my favorite types of block. And while I tell you about the block, I'm going to pop the steamer back on. And um, I think it's going to look really, really lovely in, um, 
in this burgundy fur felt. So I'm going to steam this. I am still here, everybody. I'm just, I'm, I'm down in the burrito corner. Do you know, it occurs to me that what I should have done is I should have been steaming a block whilst unblocking one of the ones from the previous week and then that would have taken enough time to then completely steam through and pop onto the next block. Maybe we'll try that in the next live stream. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Right, let's talk about this block. This is a puzzle block. This is one of my favorite types of blocks. Um, they're very easy to use and they give some very, very interesting shapes. And um, <laughs> let's... <laughs> Question time. Why do you guys think there's a little bit of felt in the middle here? Now, if you're a previous viewer and you've seen my previous Come Block With Me live stream, which is one of the first live streams I did last year, you will know why this is. So if you know why it is, um, don't tell anyone in the comments or in the chat. Uh, let everyone else have a guess and then we'll talk about why this is here. I don't know if anyone's joining me from from um, who's been watching for that long, actually. Um, Julia says, not making yet. You are just now introducing me to what is involved. I am first interested in restoration. Oh, I'm just going to move my screen across. Uh, I am first interested in restoration. We'll be checking your past videos. Oh, thank you, Julia. Yes. Um, oh, restoration of the vintage hats. Oh yes, that's always a fun project. I've actually got two vintage hats that um, one needs to be restored. That's this one. Let me show you since we're here and we're waiting for the steam and I've actually got it right here. I've got this vintage hat here that needs some restoration work. As you can see, it's the actual shape of it is, is great. I think it's a crochet... Um, a crochet straw, I think. It's a bit stretchy. It's it's very odd. I've I've never seen something. I've never seen this material in like modern shops, uh, modern supply shops. But it needs these flowers completely redone. So my plan would be, is to take off all the flowers, reuse the stamens because these stamens are quite delightful but I want to try and re recreate the um, flower pattern from scratch. So maybe once we move past the new year and into spring, I will um, try and re redo this one, but closer to the spring, because it would be weird working on straw in the winter, even though that's what professional milliners who make collections do. You see, I don't, I don't make collections. I just make hats whenever I feel like it. <laughs> So if it's the winter, I'm gonna make winter hats. Um, Rachel says that she loves my um, plaid skirt. Oh, thank you very much. It's um, it's a skirt from a British, I think it's a British company called Voodoo Vixen. They do reproduction um, reproduction clothes. I, I really like the fit of their stuff because um, I'll talk about this more in my pattern making video actually, but I've got a very, well, I mean, I, I say very odd. Oh, we've got to cover this in cling film. Um, I've got a bit of an odd figure. As in, like, not standard figure. So, I've got a very short back, and I've got a very high hip. And then I've got long arms and long legs. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a very squat body and long limbs. <laughs> so nothing fits me right. Um, so I don't tend to buy that many clothes. I, I do prefer to make them. Right. Uh, this block doesn't need a collar on it. It just, um, it, it's got its own head fitting at the bottom. If I wanted to size this block up, I would potentially block two felts over it, increasing the size by about a centimetre. Um, if I wanted to size it down, oh, excuse me. If I wanted to size the block down, I would have to block normally and then put in a slightly smaller ribbon. 
realistically you can oh one second all the steam is going everywhere realistically you can only size a hat down by about one centimeter so one size i wouldn't try and go any lower um aha hannah you're having a guess at what's happened to the block you're saying i think the middle part or hannah law i'm i i, I don't know um that's clearly a internet name um I think the middle part has sunken a few millimetres due to age. The felt square will avoid the ridge when the block hat. Perfect. Excellent. Correct answer. Five stars. You are the A star student. Well done. That is exactly why the felt square is in the middle. It's quite common on um, puzzle blocks. When you buy a new puzzle block, it should all fit together perfectly. But the older the block is, it, it will sink down. So well done. You've got it. Um, uh, Hannah Law says, no, I'm Dutch. My name is German. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry if I mispronounce names. <laughs> um, Hannah, Hannah Law, is that right? Is that the pronunciation? Thank you for having a go at guessing. Right. Uh, gloves, protect my hands. And off we go. <laughs> I wonder if it would be premature for me to say that I have a good feeling about this one. <laughs> and now watch it all go wrong. Right. And pull, pull, pull. The, the one problem with this again is that it's so close to my table on one side. that again, it's difficult to, I really need to find a way. Oh, the jar, of course, we can use the jar to prop it up. Uh, almost right, you pronounce the last E, so Hannah Laurie. There we go. We're all learning things today. I'm learning how to pronounce names. I think I've now got that right, hopefully. Oh, falling off the, oh, this would actually be one of those that would do better, oh, I know. Oh. I know. I've had another idea. Not the jar. Let's try a box. Let's try a box. If I take that. Hopefully this won't fall off the box. Mm, no, maybe the box isn't too great either. Oh look, but we're almost there. This, I think this is the most success we've had today. So I've just got a little bit of bumping around here. Let's try again. Let's take this off. More steam. Oh, actually, no. Um, I'm going to keep it on the box. And oh, it needs needs to be pulled more this way. I'm I'm running out of I'm running out of felt here. I need to be able to turn that bit under. So let's grab that steamer. Oh, it's almost run out of water. I'm going to hope that that's enough. I'm going to try and pull this felt down this way. So I need to steam. The one problem is, is I've got, got green covering this from the previous hat. Right, let's try. This poor steamer has been in constant use. So Hannah Law says, I make hats for myself. I use little buckets and Tupperware to block them. I mostly use thrifted hats and reform them. That is a brilliant thing to do. Oh, the camera's getting steamy. <laughs> Let's go from this way. Um, that's pretty much how I started. Have you tried blocking on a plant pot? Those are fun, blocking on plant pots. They're great. And if you go to a garden center, you can find a lot of very exciting shaped plant pots. Rachel says um, that she's super excited about this one, whether you digitize it, make the file available, or sell blocked blanks of it, I covet it. Oh, thank you. Yes, um, I am planning on selling blocked blanks of most of these hat blocks because I don't want to hoard them all for myself. I'm not interested in exclusive millinery. 
so um, yes, I think I will be if these are easy enough to block on <laughs> because well, well, we'll see how we go. Um, I aim to make blanks of these available from December onwards, depending on life. Um, hopefully I'm not that busy over the next couple of months and I have enough time to figure it out. Oh, see how I'm using my stomach to really pull down. So I'm bracing myself over, over here with my stomach and trying to distribute this extra ridge forwards. Uh, Julia says, thanks for sharing hobbyist ideas. Of course, like, uh, it, it, you know, it, there's some milliners who get very upset when people are hobbyists or whatever. I, I don't personally like that term. I think you are, if you make hats, it's called millinery, you know? Doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist or not. Um, we're living through a time when people haven't been wearing hats for a couple of decades. You know, we need we need to we need to start wearing hats. And if we can't make hats, we're not going to wear the hats because a new hat is so expensive. So even if you call yourself a hobbyist and you make a hat, then great. I I love that. I think everyone should make at least one hat in their life <laughs> and then wear it. Applying more steam to this ridge. So Rachel from the YouTube channel Labricalou says that she's blocked on a plant pot. Oh, the other thing you can block on, if you go to IKEA, now IKEA through the lens of a milliner is the funnest place to be because go to the lampshade section. It's so much fun. Lampshades are another great source of um, hat blocks that are unconventional. Right, well, I have enough space now to turn this bit under and I'm struggling to distribute all of this in that direction. So um, we've only got 10 minutes left of the blocking stream and I think I'm struggling to talk and pull at the same time. So I'm gonna stop here and if you will go and follow me on Instagram at Bialona Millinery, let's see if I can flash that up on the screen. Is that going to work? Oh, my little thing isn't going to work, is it? Let's see. One second, everyone. I'm just playing with some behind the scenes controls. Um, if you go and follow me on at Bialona Millinery on Instagram, then uh, I will post some pictures of these once I've blocked them over the next week. How about that? Oh, I'm getting very tired. Oh, I think I've had enough for today. I don't know about you guys. It's, it's quite physically exhausting to block a lot. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe not necessarily the most successful day in terms of blocking live but that's just sometimes it's just hard and sometimes it just doesn't work and today is clearly one of those days so I'm sorry about that everyone but I think we've had fun I hope you've all learned things I've I've learned things from you guys that's that's why I like to do the live streams it's it's fun to see you all chatting to each other know where you're all from talk about hatty things talk about new ideas new videos and plant pots <laughs> blocking on plant pots um, Rob says although you had challenges today I still learned a lot I'm I'm very glad to hear that <laughs> um, what what's up husband is here what's going on oh to end the stream let's let's look at my cat to end the stream isn't that fun come on husband move the camera then Right, well, this is going to be me signing off. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Um, I will see you next time. And this is my cat, Drusilla, to play you all out. <laughs> Drusilla, say hello. Or rather, say goodbye, Drusilla. We all say bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> bye, everyone. <laughs>
She's grown a lot. <laughs> See you next time, everyone. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.